the drive acts as a soft start. It slowly brings it up to speed. So you don't have that concern, it slowly brings it down. So it keeps a, it puts less wear on the motor. And uh, and, and on the belts and all the other goodies that go with it. And uh, well, it reduces uh, greenhouse gases, of course, because you're using less energy and improve comfort. And we have some tools that will calculate how much carbon dioxide you take out of the air if you're using a VFD. You're going to save this much electricity, this much money. Oh, by the way, you're taking so many tons of, of carbon dioxide out of the air. Or not putting it in the air, I guess. Uh, this is a VFD. What is it? Well, let's start off on this side. Now, if we look at an NXS, which is the uh, blue model in the middle here, it has an AC chill. The uh, uh, and that's a low frequency harmonic filter. The others have a DC choke, and there's different brands, different types. The DC choke must be a little bit less because a smart drive is less as a DC choke. The, uh, the core drive does not have the filters until you get over 50 horsepower. We'll get into that as we go on here. So we have an EMC filter. That's the high frequency filter. Uh, these are European drives they designed. So Europe requires certain filter. They don't have the same filtering requirement in the US or in Asia. So if you buy an Asian drive, chances are the filters aren't there, unless you get the high end stuff or you get the larger sizes. Uh, European drives tend to have that. So ABB, uh, Honeywell, the Bacon, uh, those, those drives would, would tend to have those, those uh, filters. Now, it goes through a rectifier bridge first. Man, the other diagram is so much better. Uh, I'm using one up this uh, training slide. But it goes through the filter, goes through the, the choke, and also the AC choke protects the, uh, the rectifiers because it's a capacitor. So it has a little more protection. Uh, the, uh, it goes through the rectifier circuit. What the rectifier circuit does is it changes the AC coming in to DC. And then it goes through this choke, which blocks the low frequency harmonics and, and the capacitor, and then into the uh, uh, IGBT insulated gate bipolar transistor, the inverter. The part that does all the work, right there. And those are different sizes depending on how big the drive is. And that drives the motor of these outputs. Now, this is a very, very simplified diagram. The AC coming in is converted to DC. So that means that if the motor is running backwards, you don't reverse these wires here. Because it won't make any difference in the output. You have to reverse these wires in the output. How many guys have run into that? It was so much easier to you know, just change the wires at the end, into coming in. It didn't make any difference. How come? Well, because you're changing it to DC. And then it, it uh, gives you pulses. It, it can be anywhere from 1,000 hertz to 16,000 hertz. And it's, it is adjustable. They come, the default values that come with it are the ones that are most efficient for that size. So if you have a 10 horsepower motor, it might be a 5,000 uh, hertz uh, carrier frequency, they call that. And that's the frequency that produces the sine wave. The sine wave kind of looks like that. Uh, others, uh, if you have a 30 horse, maybe it's only 3,000. But that is adjustable because if your motor's humming or buzzing or whatever, and you want to be able to change that a little bit, you have that ability. I don't recommend it, but if it needs it, it's there to be. And it is a parameter you can change, so you got to do that. Uh, the motor can be reversed. There is a reverse capability here, so if you want to run the motor backwards, you can. Obviously, in elevators, so you want to go up and down. Uh, so they can reverse the direction. You tend not to do that with fans and pumps. And that's one of the things you check first after you put a drive in is you, you turn it on and see if the fans turn in the right direction. Now, the uh, I didn't show it, they don't show it on here, but typically there would be a brake circuit here also. If you're putting this in a non uh, HVAC application, for instance, when you require a brake. Now, uh, for instance, an elevator. You kind of want the elevator to stop right on a dime, you know, stop where you told it to. 
Fannie, you don't care. Fan, eh, but Coast Coast off, who cares? Bump, same way. But uh, elevator's kind of important. Uh, some of the line might be important too. So on the industrial and, large and commercial notice, we do have the capability of adding a brake circuit to these things. And the brake uh, would actually, I don't know if you've ever played with slot cars or not. Has anyone ever done that? Where they've uh, on a little track, you have a little controller and it goes around. I used to work at one that had, you know, had 12 crisis when I was a kid. And it had 12 uh, things on a large 240 foot track. And they would race these things, 12 volt transformers running, and you rent the time to race them and so on. And, uh, and I always wonder how come if you let go of that controller, it stops on the dime? Until one day I took apart a controller and I saw that what the controller does is it puts voltage to that track, of course, because it's getting power from the, from the system. And when you let go, it disconnects the power and it shorts out the motor. Now you get a little motor spinning there, and, and when a motor spins, it's got a magnet in the coil, what have you got? Generator. Generator. And that generator just builds up a make, uh, magnetic uh, uh, flux, and, and, and the coil actually stops the motor. And that's how it works. Now, the same thing with AC motors. If you shorted that 50 horsepower motor out, you'd stop on a dime once. <laughs> Uh, so what they would tend to do to stop a motor would be to have a large resistor, and sometimes they're water-cooled, it look like a big radiator, it's a big resistor, the, you know, the bigger the motor, the bigger the resistor, and uh, when they tell it to stop, they would just take the current from that uh, motor that's spinning and send that over to uh, this resistor, and that would what stop, would stop the motor. So brakes are available. We don't sell the resistors, you can get them in electrical supply house. No magic to the brand, uh, but if you ever run into a case like that, yeah, they are available. Um, the keypad, the electronics uh, here, they have the low voltage section. Then you get into the high voltage section here, which is the part that actually drives the motor, and there's a fan. These parts are replaceable. Uh, you can pop the fan out; it just pops out, and you can put a new one in there if you need to. Uh, and the key, uh, keypad is replaceable. Now, when you look at the energy savings, I, I just want to give you a quick rundown of why drives are so popular. If I slow down the speed to 70%, running at uh, 42 hertz, I save 66% of the energy. If I cut the speed in half, I save 88% of the energy to run that motor. So when you look at it, and of course you're running at 10%, you're saving a huge amount, but uh, typically you're running the motor here. You're using half the energy. And this is a, uh, a chart put out by the UK Department of Commerce that shows an average commercial building and what the energy amount, how, how, how much time you spend. This is the operating time here and uh, what percentage of speed you're running. As you can see, occasionally uh, it's off, but occasionally you're running at 100%, but most of the time you're up here between 25% and 75. That's where the energy savings is. And uh, of course the, the, the drive is like a gas pedal. It just slows down and it speeds up the motor. The, uh, on pump systems, there's different ways of saving, saving money. Uh, and uh, on a drive, you have a, there's methods such as bypasses. You know, if you, if you don't want the flow to be so large, you can use a bypass or uh, change the impellus so that, that'll not pump as much. Uh, throttling, uh, throttling the valve. All these things are used to control <coughs> The, uh, the flow. And the VFD is, of course, the last one on here. As you can see, the, uh, the VFD gives you the most uh, uh, control here at the least amount of power used. And we ac actually have a calculating tool that compares the different methods. For instance, uh, this is pumps, but they also have the same thing for fans to show how much energy I save based on the different types of things. In short, VFD save money. Uh, 